Good morning, Richard here and welcome to today's video. It is the middle of January 2021 and I thought it was about time that I got my Lightroom organized catalog, easy for me to say. I thought it was time I got my Lightroom catalog organized. So I am going to show you how I do it and what I'm gonna be doing for the rest of the year and how I think that's gonna improve my workflow and my organization. So we're gonna jump into Lightroom now and look at some folders, some look at the catalog, look at what you can use to manage and organize your photos. And hopefully it will make things easier for you as I'm hoping it will for me. So let's have a look. So here we are in Lightroom. You can see that it is totally empty because this is a test catalog I'm using just to show things on this tutorial. But before we do anything in Lightroom, the key thing here is to work out where you are gonna store your photos moving forward. So you may have already have a, a library uh, set up on your hard drive or on an external hard drive. The important thing here is to know where you're going to store your photos. It's really, really important um, for, for now, obviously, but also for years to come. So you want to try and make it as future proof as possible. So if you've got a load of storage space on your computer's hard drive and you're not thinking of changing it anytime soon, then you'll be OK. But what if you had small storage left on your computer or your laptop and you wanted to um, upgrade or you needed more storage space or you had to uh, change laptops for whatever reason so basically I save all of my photos on an external hard drive which means if I ever change computers I don't have to worry about moving the photos they're already there um, but for the purpose of this tutorial I have got them just on my main drive because we're only talking about a few photos that I'm going to use uh, for this tutorial so one of the first things that I think is important here is to do a to work out your folder structure and what you're gonna do. Um, if you're gonna, I can't tell you what to do because everyone's different. I do years and dates or years and months. Sorry, years and events. Uh, so 2019, 2020, 2021, and then what I do, whether it's a holiday or a family day out or just any type of shoot that I do. Um, but it's got to be unique to you. So whatever is good for you that's the thing that you need to do. So give that some thought now because it, it's not impossible, but it will make your life easy if you don't have to change it later on. So here we are back. We're now looking at my um, Find the Window or File Explorer, or whatever software operating system you're using. I have a really simple setup, which is basically um, I have a library and I have years and events. So um, these aren't all of them. These are just a few events and a few photos from each event that I've chosen just to um, demonstrate this tutorial with. So getting that right first time is is really important. So give it some thought, make sure it works for you, make sure it's something that you can grow with over the coming months and years um, and make you will make your life so much easier. Now. We're gonna jump into Lightroom now and we're gonna look at the catalog. Now, one thing that we need to be clear about is the Lightroom catalog is not the same as, as the catalog or the library where your photos are. They're two very separate things. Um, Adobe website explains it as being a catalog is a database that stores a record for each of your photos. So while it doesn't actually store your photos. It is kind of like a lookup that finds your photos where they're stored and brings in a preview to Lightroom. I'm sure it's more complicated than that, but that's what we're going with at the moment. Um, so basically as photos are added to Lightroom, there's a link created to the original photos. So you don't actually add, like I say, the photo into Lightroom itself. It doesn't duplicate the photos. It just generates a preview and as you edit the photo in the catalog or in Lightroom it will um, reflect those changes on a preview of the image not the image itself because the Lightroom is non-destructive which means it does not affect the original image on your hard drive if you want to keep a copy of the image that you've edited you have to export it as a new photograph um, now 
catalogs how many catalogs should you have now there is some um it's not dispute but some people have more than one catalog they might have a catalog for 2019 a catalog for 2020 a catalog for 2021 or a catalog per year or per genre a wedding one a, a portrait one a sports one whatever i don't recommend that because i've got about 42,000 photos in my um in my master catalog and it it runs lightroom runs pretty good uh, obviously the more memory you've got in your computer the better it will run um, but the point is that if you want to look at say you want to compare a photo from or you're doing something in 2020 and you want to look at a photo from 2019 you've got to close a catalog down reopen a new catalog find that photo do what you want to do close it down again open up 2020 catalog again and you're back and forth between catalogs Keep them, if you can keep them into one catalogue, it will make everything a lot easier. And I'll show you now how I do it. So if you're new to um, Lightroom, but not to photography, then you will have probably a number of images stored somewhere on your hard drive. And like I've said, it's important that you get those in order before you do this, because it will help in the long run. And the process of getting them into Lightroom is, is really straightforward. So you can see here that I've got in under my main drive users pictures lightroom library blah, blah blah this is where my images are being stored so going back into lightroom make sure we're in the you're in the library module and then you click on the import dialog box and you are shown um, a import area with all of your hard drives or any connected memory cards down the left hand side you basically just need to navigate to where you have saved your catalog or your library your photos on your hard drive be it the main hard drive or an external hard drive and when you have them click on the folder that you want to import now if it doesn't show any photos then make sure you may have a little box here that says show subfolders make sure you click on there so you can see here now that we've clicked on the word library and we've got 2019, 2020, 20, 2021. Coming to the top here, all we want to do, we don't want to move them or we don't want to copy them. We just want to add them. So we're going to leave them where they are on the hard drive and just add them into Lightroom. So make sure the add is highlighted and click on import in the bottom right hand corner here. And what that will do is that will replicate everything that is on the hard drive into the Lightroom catalog. It's basically just a mirror image. So you can see down the left hand side, you oh, let's get this sorted out I'm clicking and clicking uh, we have what will replicate here so we have 2019 2020 2021 and we have two events in each 2019 2020 2021 and we have two events in each folder this is how you add the photos that are on your hard drive into the Light Lightroom catalog so if you want to add new photos to your Lightroom catalog, really, really simple to do. You've been out on a shoot, you've got a memory card of new photos. I am, this is the ones that I've done. So I am just gonna delete these and go back to where I was. So delete from disk and we're just gonna remove that folder so I can go back to the beginning let's go back to my photos here there we go it's gone so I've now been out for a nice forest walk and I wish I some of these photos actually but I want to bring in those photos into my catalog now there's a few ways you can do this um, I'm suggesting this way because it does a number of things in one go. It creates a new folder on the hard drive. It adds the photos to your hard drive and to your Lightroom library in one go. It renames the photos if you want to rename them. And you can apply copyright and keywords, etc., at the same time, which I won't go into right now because um, that's a whole nother video. But the point is, it's really, really simple. So again, we click on the import box. You click on the memory card that you want to import and these are the photos here we've set we're clicking we're including copy we're not going to move them or or add them because we want to copy them onto the hard drive from the memory card and 
I'm just going to cover a couple of things over here um, just for the process of this tutorial. So file renaming, I'm going to rename these files as Forest Walk. So as they are imported, they are renamed and we are going to import them to a folder called Forest Walk. Now the key thing here is to make sure that you are on in the folder you want the new folder to be created in. So my folder is in Lightroom, it's in Temp, sorry, it's in Lightroom, it's in Library and it is in 2021. So I'm going to make sure I've got 2021 highlighted. I'm going to tick this box and call the subfolder Forest Walk and you will see down here it has added a greyed out folder called Forest Walks. It hasn't actually added it yet but that's where it will be added to. And then all we need to do is, what have we got here? We've got, is this 15 images? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 15 images. We're going to add those 15 images to the folder called Forest Walk. So we can see down the left hand side here, it has added a folder called Forest Walk and it is adding the images as we go. And if we also head over to the hard drive, it is doing exactly the same thing here. It's going to add 15 images and it's renaming them as it goes. So as I said before, what that's done is it's um, it's done quite a few things. It's copied them from your memory card. It's added them to your hard drive or your external hard drive. It's renamed them. It's added them to Lightroom, and it is now in your on your hard drive and in your library or your Lightroom catalog at the same time. So here we are. They're all complete. We can see the 15 images there. So that is the real easy way of getting them into your computer. Now once you've got them in you're going to want to pick the ones that you like so I'm going to go through this really quickly I'll spend a little bit more time in this normally um, but I normally have them big and I would use the pick or the flag in options and there's three options you can do pick, P for pick, X for reject or U to clear flag so let's say I pick this photo It is flagged the photo as you can see in the bottom left hand corner here and you can also see it just here and that is now got a little white flag next to it. You can then go through the ones that you think you're going to like so I'm going to pick this one here as well. Um, I'm going to pick this one looks pretty good for me. Let's pick this one and maybe that one I don't know. So there, so we have picked, uh, let's see what we picked. One, two, three, four, five. So I picked five photos from this little walk I did. Um, in fact, I'm gonna pick six. No, I'm not, I'm, yeah, I'm gonna pick six. So let's pick this last one here. So if you wanted then to look at the ones you picked, you can click on the filter button here, which shows you all of the photos you've picked and let's say mm, I don't really like this one so you can unpick it with a letter U and that will remove the flag from that photo and we've now got one two three four five photos picked there you can do it with your mouse as well you can right mouse click set flag and pick them here but I prefer to use a keyboard because it's a lot quicker um, to pick the photos. Now as you're going through them you might find a couple that you want to reject so let's just for the for the fun of it let's reject that one let's reject that one and we're going to reject that one there as well. So we can now clearly see by looking at these 15 photos the ones that are greyed out are rejected the ones that are with a white flag are picked and then we've got the other ones which are neither here nor there and it may be that you're not sure or you don't want to delete them because it's a cute photo of your kid or something but it's not something you want to keep and, and show off to the world um, but you don't want to delete it either. So we've now been able to really really quickly differentiate the photos that we want and the ones we don't want. So that is using the flags. Now there is another option that you can use to highlight the photos that you like and that is using the star rating. Again you can use this with a right mouse click and pick set rating but it's just as easy to use the number keys. So I don't really use star ratings that much but I may start 
this year, but I can't see any situation where I would. For me, again, everyone's different. Um, and the only things I use the stars for really is, let's say we've taken a trip somewhere last year, uh, not last year, it was two years ago now, we went to California, around Yosemite, and we saw some great sights. Um, it was a family holiday, so there was no proper photography going on, but there were a few photos that I really liked. So the ones that I wanted just as family only, I would give a three star, and the ones that I wanted maybe to put in a portfolio or share to Instagram or the ones that I was particularly proud of, I may give five stars. That's the only one, only a time at the moment that I am using um, star ratings. But it's pretty straightforward again how you do it. So let's say I wanna use this one. Um, let's say, let's, I don't know, let's say that this is a three star, so you just simply press number three and you can see it's rated three underneath. This is a three star, three underneath, but you really like this one, that's gonna be a five star, so you hit the number five. It's really as simple as that, there's nothing too complicated about it. Um, like I said, I don't really use it that often. I may, but I can't at the moment see what I would, but that is just another way of categorizing and organizing or managing your photos and which ones you like or don't like in, um, in Lightroom. So the next, a uh, way of organizing or managing your photos if you wanted to highlight or differentiate any photos in an album could be using colors again i don't use these that extensively but yeah this is how you can use them if you wanted to now let's say that you wanted to color um let's pick a different folder for something a bit different here's a few photos that i took when i went to the f1 a couple of years ago so let's say you have decided to highlight all your favorite photos in green um, you can a couple of ways you can do it you can right mouse click set color label and pick green let's say we're gonna do yellow for this one um, yellow are the ones that you're you're half liking so you can highlight those in yellow um, and again you can come to the filters down here and if you want to highlight or show just the yellow ones you can click on the yellow filter so we're going to turn that off for the time being um, you don't have to use the right mouse click you can use six seven eight or nine which gives you I think it is red yellow green or blue so let's see six is red, seven is yellow, eight is blue, nine is, sorry, eight is green, nine is blue. There is a purple as well, but that doesn't have a number, so you will have to do that with a keyboard, I'm afraid. I don't know a way of getting that in with the keyboard. If anyone does, let me know. Um, I'm just gonna undo those because I don't want them all different colors like that. Um, I used to use green sometimes if I put things on Instagram. That's the only time I would really use the color labels, but I'm I'm stopping doing that this year and I'll show you why in a minute because there's a better way of of doing that. Or uh, well, you can still use the colors. Um, it will become clear soon, bear with me. Um, so basically, that is as simple as that. There's nothing really more complicated than that. You can, however, change your colors. So if you weren't, you saw then when I went into here, I have green Instagram. So if you click on metadata and come down to color label set and edit, here you can change. So you've got the colors here, red, yellow, green, blue, purple, and you've got the number six, seven, eight, nine, and nothing. You can um, type, I would leave the letter in there, um, the, the, the word green in there, because if you take it out, when you right mouse click, it doesn't actually, if we was to place the, the word red with um, favorites, then you wouldn't know what color that's gonna be unless you memorized it. So I'm leave, I leave the color in there, but basically you can um, type something after it. So initially that was like that, and I just thought, right, all my green ones are gonna be Instagram, so that I know that anything I color green is what I've sent to Instagram and I can then filter on um, that folder or my whole library if I wanted to and find all the ones I'd sent to Instagram. So let's go to Forest Walk again. Let's pick this one as um, 
yellow let's go to the guitar shoot I did and let's pick this one as yellow too and then I could just click on library which will give me all of my photos and ask for just the yellow ones and it would show all the yellow ones from all the different events or all the different folders that I've got so it's another good way of um, categorizing your photos as long as you know what colors are for what category then it could be used in that way but the way that I am going to be using this or I'm going to be spending a lot of time and effort over the coming months organizing my catalog and my library is to use collections so collections are a great way of organizing and manager and managing your photos in Lightroom so there are different types of collections you can set up but we're going to concentrate on smart collections because it does it automatically and I'm all for doing things automatically and basically smart collections are like filters you can assign certain criteria and it will filter your photos based on the options you choose so let's pick a simple one for now come down to collections here on the left hand side and hit the plus button we are gonna say that we want to pick all of my um, flagged photos from 2019 so let's see uh, in 2019 we have now let's do actually let's flag some photos first so we're gonna pick that one pick that one and in here we're gonna pick that one and pick that one and we're gonna pick that one as well why the devil not so if we go to 2019 now and we filter it on flagged items down here you can see that we have five photos so there's ten photos in total five of them have a flag which means I like them so we come down here to collections and we're going to click on the plus sign and we are first of all we're going to create a collection set which is kind of like a, a hierarchy a folder hierarchy this collection set is going to be called my smart collections we're not going to put it inside a collection set because it's the top level we are now going to make sure we are on my smart collections and we are going to right mouse click and create something called my smart collections and we're going to call this 2019 flagged photos so this is all the photos. This is my intention here is to bring back all of the um, photo. Just clearing that out because that's one that I've done before. Um, my intention is now to bring back all of the photos from 2019 that were flagged. So not just from the Barcelona F1, not just from USA, but all my favourite photos from that year. So we are going to make sure that down the left hand side we have folder. We are going to make because that's what these are. These are folders. We are going to make sure it contains the word 2019 that's the first criteria if we left it like that all it would do is bring back all of the photos from 2019 but that's not what we want so we are going to add another filter we are going to choose pick flag and we're going to say is flagged you could add all sorts of different criteria you could say it's a pick flag and it's green or it's a pick flag and it's um, with your favorite camera or what photos did I take in 2019 for my iPhone if you put those into Lightroom lots of different options depending on what you want to set up collections for we're just going to go with these 2019 flagged photos just for this um, example so then we are going to hit create and it has brought back five photos that were flagged now remember that there's five there if we go back to uh, let's go back to USA and let's say this photo here hasn't been flagged but we are quickly going to make it um, so you can see there's my little boy running towards us with a melting snowball in his hand so that wasn't in 2019 flag photos but we are now going to pick it and if we go down to 2019 flagged photos it is automatically added that photo in there so that is a great way of um, it's a great way of, of automatically highlighting your photos without having to remember to add it to somewhere else or to filter it or to do this. Once you've set that up, 
for the rest of the year or for the rest of the month or whatever you choose to set that collection up for it will automatically add photos so i could set one up now for 2021 all my flag photos for 2021 and i'll know that between now and anything that goes in that 2021 folder that i flag will appear in that smart collection which means that they will be easy to find you could break it down even further if you wanted to you could perhaps add a keyword tag let's say you added all of your instagram photos um, we are going to put a keyword tag in here called Instagram. We're going to put a keyword tag in here called Instagram. Okay, so I've keyword, I've added both those pictures to Instagram and I've keyworded them Instagram so that I know that. If we now come down to here into Smart Collections again, we are going to do Create Smart Collection. We now want to call this Instagram let's call it posted to Instagram again the folder is going to be well, it doesn't have to have a folder but we are going to pick the folder 2019 and we are now going to change this to keyword contains Instagram create and we have now got those two photos that I keyworded Instagram. So if I wanted to find all my Instagram photos from 2019, as long as I added the keyword Instagram in or whatever method I choose, it could be green. So I could set that as a green highlight or a green option in the um, label color. I think I had yellow, didn't I? So let's pick yellow. So we change that to yellow and it's gonna bring back all of my yellow photos and if I forget if I go up to USA and I make this photo yellow and I come back down again it's added it there so it's a real easy way of um, automatically adding pictures and clustering them together all cluster clustering I like that word adding all those photos together clustering those photos together to um, they're easy to find basically without going through all of your folders wondering what images you sent to Instagram or which you flagged in one year or whatever criteria you want. That is a great way of isolating them and ring fencing them. And that is it. That is some real high level tips on how you might be able to organize your, live, your um, Lightroom catalog in 2021 if you've not got a decent structure already or in a bit of a mess like I was uh, I've spent a bit of time thinking about this and that's what I'm going to do so I'm going to leave it there there is going to be a blog post on this which will go into a lot more detail the link of that the link for that will be down below um, I'm going to leave it there for now I want to say thank you as always for stopping by and checking out this video please give me a thumbs up if you liked it and tell me how you do yours if leave me a comment down below let me know if there's a, a better way of doing things or i've done something wrong or you can expand on what i've already said and if you haven't already don't forget to subscribe to the channel because we are going to be sticking out we we it's just me it's not we i am going to be sticking out lots of videos over the next few weeks to about Lightroom, about photography, about all sorts of things that I'm doing. So it'd be great to have you along for the journey. And until then, have a great day and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.